Well, let's now have a look at a practical application of the attribute transfer SOP. And what I want to do is set up a situation where this tire here, when it rolls across this sandy terrain, will leave some tire tracks. So I've got a grid here, which is in fact my sand. Oops, that's in capitals. Some sand. And I've got a fairly decent resolution on this grid, 150 points by 150 columns, so that we've got plenty of geometry here to deform later on. And then my tire is a simple model. Now I've put some animation on the tire so that it moves across the terrain. Uh, but in fact, as you can see, it's not rotating as it moves. So that's the first thing we need to fix. And I can fix that by putting an expression in here. And it's minus 360 divided by, and I need to work out how much of the circumference will need to have rotated round in order to equal the distance here. And the circumference is 2 pi times the radius. So I need in fact to multiply this by the value of tz, which is the value here. This is the distance it's traveled. And then I need to divide it by the circumference. And the circumference is pi times the diameter. So dollar pi will give us pi. That's a special variable that exists in Houdini which gives us pi. Uh, and then I need to find the radius or the diameter of this. And I'm going to do that using the B box expression. And this can give me the bounding box dimension in any one of a number of ways and the thing that I'm going to look for is the content of this and the end node and I'll show you where that is in a minute. So I'm looking down inside this tire geometry for a node called end and I'm going to get its x size like so. And what this should mean is that as my tire moves, it rotates. And we can see that happening quite clearly there. And I was grabbing, if we dive inside here, I was grabbing this node at the end here, which is called end. And I was using that, the x diameter of that, to produce the diameter of my tire, which I need in order to animate the rotation correctly. Now I want the changes in this sand to be permanent. I want the wheel to make an impression in the sand and then even after it's rolled past for that depression to still exist. So that means I'm going to need to use DOPS. So let me first of all bring my sand into DOPS as a rigid body object. So I've selected the sand and I'm using the RBD tool here and that should have given us an auto dot network, we can see it here, and here's our sand, and then it's created some other nodes here, which are a rigid body simulation. And in fact, I'm not going to need any of those, so I'm going to delete all of them, just going to leave uh, the rigid body object. And to manipulate the points on an object using SOPs, but in a DOPS context, what you need is the SOP solver. So the SOP solver operates on the geometry that's stored inside this RPD object. And it operates in such a way that at each frame it executes a number of SOPs on that geometry and it saves the result of those SOPs and then feeds it back in to the next frame. So you can change your geometry permanently and calculate a new set of geometry which is dependent on the values of the geometry at the last frame. Uh, and that's what we're going to need to do if we're going to make a permanent depression in this sand. So let's first of all bring in, using an object merge SOP, uh, my wheel. And what I need to do is to transform it into this object. And this means that the transforms that we applied earlier uh, to animate the wheel will be brought in as transforms on this actual object. So let's do that. And the object I want to bring in is the tire. So there's our tire. 
and let's just have a look. We can now see this in this context. It rotates, that's fine. And what I want to do, in fact, is use the attribute transfer op to achieve that depression, that tire track that we want to, to make. So the first thing I need to do is create an attribute that we're going to transfer. So let's create an attribute. And I'm going to call it new y. And I'm going to give it a value here of dollar ty. And dollar ty is the y position of the point that we're applying this attribute to. So each point will get a value of this attribute equivalent to its y position, in other words, its height. And if we bring up a details view, we can see that quite clearly. The y position is the same as this new y attribute. And I'm going to give it a default value of something very big, and we'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to give it a default value of 100. And the next thing I'm going to do is use an attribute transfer. So let's lay one down. And this is the geometry we're going to transfer from. And what we're going to do is transfer it to the geometry of uh, the sand. And that's going to come in from this SOP here, which is labeled dot geometry. So let's just bring it in and place it there. So this is now going to transfer the attribute, and the attribute we want to transfer is new y. So we're now going to have a value of new y on every point of this sand, providing, well, it's going to be on every point, but these conditions are going to be important. And what I want to do is just bring this distance threshold down to, say, 1. And that's going to mean that it's only going to look for points that are within a radius of 1 of the point we're interested in. So otherwise, what we'd find is that the, this would be too big and we get a huge depression. In fact, I might need to look at this and lower this even further later on. So we've now got a value of new y on each point. Let's have a look. We've got a value of new y. A lot of the values are 100. And then some of them are smaller than 100. And that's because in those cases, there is a point that's nearer uh, than the distance threshold. Where there isn't a point that's nearer than the distance threshold, what's happening is we're getting this default value of 100, which is why most of these points have got a value of 100. And the next thing I'm going to do is use a point SOP to change the height of the points of my sand. Uh, you'll notice here there's a thick line coming in here, which means that it's this geometry, it's the sand, which is going to come out of this SOP. And I'm going to change the value of the Y position. So what I'm going to do is make it the minimum of either the existing Y position, which is $TY, or the new attribute, new y. So if new y is less than the existing y value, in other words, if there's a nearby point of this wheel that's underneath the sand, it's going to reduce the sand, it's going to depress it down to that value. So let's see whether we can see that working. I've just recooked the simulation to make sure that it's going to work OK. And let's now have a look at our I'm just going to turn on a headlight so that we can see it more easily. And let's see whether this now works. So this is coming through. Now we can see, in fact, that we're getting... Let's just check that these are correctly set up. Let's check the sand is correctly set up. OK, so we're now getting this. And we're not getting any depression. So what's happening? Well, the answer is that by default, uh, the DOP import node here on the sand is just transforming the input geometry. It's not fetching that geometry that we are manipulating inside DOPs. So we need to change this to fetch geometry. And now we can see that we've got a tire track, but it's much too large. Uh, we're getting very, very large values here. So we're going to need to reduce 
the value of the radius, the distance threshold for that attribute transfer. So let's go into the dot network, go into my sub solver, and on the attribute transfer, I'm going to take this down to say 0.1. And let's rewind this. And let's just play it and see what happens. And now we are getting a bit of a depression here. Maybe let's give this, make it 0.2 instead, give it a little bit wider radius. And then go back up. And recook the simulation and press play. See what happens. And now we're getting a rather better tire track. Well, we're getting some slight oddities here, and this is probably because we don't quite have enough points on this tire. So there are points here where there's no point uh, near enough. So we need to increase the number of points on the tire. And we can, in fact, do that by creating some new geometry which I'm going to call tire points. And I'm going to bring in, delete the file, I'm going to object merge in my tire. Again, I'm going to transform it into this object. And let's bring in the tire. And then I'm going to scatter. And I'm going to scatter some points on here. And let's scatter, say, 5,000 points. Well, that's uh, good for a start. Let's just view this object alone. And let's view points. And we can see we've got all of these points on the tire now. So we've got a hell of a lot of points. Let's up this to 10,000. Great many points. And now, what we should find, let's move this back. Uh, if we then go into the dot network to the sub solver, and instead of object merging in the tire, let's object merge in the tire points and that should bring in all of these points. There we are, they are there. So let's just recook the simulation to make sure it's working. Switch off the display of points and let's press play and see what we get. And what we should find now is that we're getting a pretty good deep tire track. And I think we can eliminate these little bumps here if we go into the auto dot network and just increase this radius just a little bit. And this seems to have uh, slightly become corrupted, but uh, let's see. And we can see we're now getting a nice tire track, like so.